How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another top-down shooter racing game mini series. What we're going to be doing in this lecture is we're going to be tying this game together. So we're going to be adding in our player gun and a few other things and hope to see how far we can get along to actually bring this all in. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new object. We're going to make it on our player layer. Uh, we are going to make a new sprite here and we are going to import our weapon machine gun. This is basically just going to be uh, our indicator where we want to pick our weapon up. I want to put this right around here because I think we'll have some enemies spawn here later on. And I want to actually call this our object gun. Since our gun is actually in our player animation, since we actually have it built in, we actually want to just leave this as it is and then we'll destroy the object once we pick it up. So let's add in a sign behavior to it just so it kind of moves around. And let's actually add in another sign behavior so we can get two different movements out of it. The first movement that I want to put is a vertical movement. And the second movement I want to put is a uh, size movement. There we go. Uh, I want to put the magnitude down to five for both of these. And I think that's going to do just fine for now. Okay, so we have our object gun. Now we need to actually go get our gun and then we actually have to do something with that gun. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an event. We're going to go for our keyboard. If our keyboard space button is pressed, then what we're going to do, oh, and we're overlapping the gun. If the player is overlapping the gun, then we're gonna destroy the gun and we're gonna set our instance variable, which we don't have yet. Let's go to our player. Let's add an instance variable. It's called this uh, inst has gun. Let's make this a boolean. We're gonna set that to true. And by doing it this way, we actually give ourselves more control over how we want this to go down. So by setting this to true, now what we can do is we can actually compare this. So let's go over here to our player. If boolean is set inst has gun, then what we can do is we can set our animation. And if we didn't do this, we wouldn't be able to, to flip it. We can say ID gun. If this is not true, by hitting X on the keyboard, I can set this back to our idle animation. Okay, so that this is good, but we actually need to put in our shooting controls. Let's hit save and let's hit play before we do our shooting controls and let's actually see this work. Oh, and actually one other thing that I wanna do here is I want to grab from our bank layout, I wanna grab our cursor object and put this over here. Uh, and then we'll get rid of our, if I didn't do it already, we'll get rid of our create event. Uh, I found that this is actually slowing it down a little bit. So this is actually gonna make it a lot faster and a lot more wild. And there we go. So let's get into our car. Let's drive away from the zombie. Let's go over here. Let's go all the way to our sine wave with our, our gun. And let's hit space. And there you go. You can see the gun destroys. And now we have our gun animation. So just like that, we now have our pickup. Let's go back to our game event. And we need to be able to shoot our gun, but we want to make sure that we're not driving while we're doing it. So let's copy and paste this. Uh, let's make a new sub event here and pop it back out. And what we want to do is we want to add another condition to this. So hit C and we want to find out if the car is not driving. That way we know that we are not inside the car and we cannot shoot if we are driving the car. Then what we want to do is find if the mouse uh, on button down left and let's see what else we could do. Um, like I said before in the other video, we're gonna say every 0.09 seconds. So what this is saying is if this is true and we're not driving and the left button is down, then every 0.09 seconds, let's have the system create our object and we need to actually go add in our objects. Let's go to our bank layout here. Let's double click, let's make a new sprites. And actually, you know what? Let's delete that sprite altogether. Delete that from the project. Let's clone our enemy sprite. Let's call this object bullet because this is, or we could call it object player bullet because it's pretty much the same exact thing. Let's double click on this player bullet. And this is something we can leave on the bank layout and let's import our player bullet like so. Uh, 32 by 16 is what I did for the enemy. So let's put this to 32 by 16 for our player. Let's go to our game event again. Let's do our system, create object. Let's create our player bullet on the player layer at object player dot image point x. And this is also something that you might want to store, but at the same time, I think you need to be able to control uh, the 
the uh, image point name. Image point, oops, object player dot image point y bullet. And just like we did with our enemy, we're gonna set the angle of the bullet. Let's go to our here, set the angle. We're gonna set the angle to self.x, self.y, and then we're gonna actually set this one to mouse.x and mouse.y. So those are the two objects that we're gonna be putting the bullet in between since we're shooting it based on where the mouse is. So let's hit save, let's hit play, and let's get into our car, away from our zombie who keeps shooting at us. And let's get out of our car, and let's pick up our gun, and there we go. So now we can actually shoot and we can hold it down, and now we have our own gun. So actually I don't like how slow that bullet is. So let's go back to our bank layout here. Let's bump this up to like 1400. It's too slow for me, so let's go put this back. There are about a thousand different things that we could add to make this game feel a lot more uh, intense, a lot more action-y, and we're going to be putting some of those in. But really what I wanted to focus on was getting in all these mechanics, the driving mechanics, the new enemy AI, uh, and actually just doing this. And then what we're going to finally wrap this all up in is our objective system. And our objective system is kind of a very basic way of handling things that are going on in the game. Tasks, quests, they're the same exact thing. So I think it's important that we do that. Now that we actually have our interaction with this world besides our car, we can actually start to add in our HUD. So let's go to our HUD. Let's double click and let's make a new text object. Because this is uh, an empty project, because this is um, because this is such a big layout, we can actually use these text objects to our advantage here. Let's make the size of this all the way up to like 28. Let's make this bigger and let's make the text font color white. Let's call this one our object player health. Let's right click and clone this. Let's call this our object car health. Let's clone this guy and keep going. Let's call this our object total kills. And let's right click clone this and call this our object tasks. Okay, so now we have our HUD all set up. Let's go to our game event and actually fill that in with some data. Let's hit G, let's call this group player gun. Let's put all of this together. Now we have a lot of collision stuff to do, but before we do that, let's just kind of tie in the existing uh, information into our HUD. So the first thing that we have here is our player health. And I don't think we created our player health variable yet, so let's do that. Let's call this inst health. Let's give it a value of we'll give ourselves five uh, chances to not die. So every tick, we're gonna set the object player health, set the text to equal, uh, let's call this health, and object player dot inst health. Hopefully you've done something similar to this before. Uh, let's do it again for our car health. Let's set the text, and I guess car health is the only thing that's coming to my mind, but you could probably call that something else. And we don't actually have a, I thought we made a variable for our car health. Let's call this inst health as well. Let's give this a value of 10. And this is setting it up for our collisions. So let's set the text here. Let's call this car health, uh, put a space there and object car dot inst health. Okay, so now we have our total kills. Let's actually go and make a new global variable uh, and let's call this total kills. That way it'll be zero. We can set that one up. And then let's make two global variables. Let's make our objective variable and that's gonna be a number. Let's make our tasks variable, which will be a, which will be a text value type. Okay, so let's set the rest of these up. Let's set our total kills text to equal total kills and total kills. Let's actually set up our tasks text, set the text to equal. Uh, now this is what we wanna do for our uh, tasks. We're gonna have a way to uh, define the number and define the actual action that we want them to do. So what we need to do is we need to say objective and actually let's say instead of a colon, let's do objective number 
and objectives. So since objectives is a number type, that'll work. Uh, then what we want to do is we want to say, and let's give it a space. We want to grab the tasks. Did I spell that wrong? Objective, so no S, just like that. Okay, so now we have this pretty much ready to go. We can give the objective the default number of one since we'll be on our first objective here. Uh, now we actually have our HUD set up and now things will start to take shape a little bit more. So we can see our health is at five, car health is at 10, total kills is at zero, and our, we're on objective number one, even though we don't actually have an objective yet. So we have a lot of things to fill. Let's start with our collisions. So the first collision that we might wanna do is when our enemy and player are colliding and we wanna subtract some health from that. So let's go into our zombie AI. And let's actually say, if the enemy bullet on collision with another object, in this case, let's go for our player, then we are going to destroy our enemy bullet and we're gonna subtract one from our instance health, just like that. So that's pretty much all we need for our player to enemy collision. We can actually flip this for our enemy. So if our player bullet collides with our enemy, then we're gonna have our player bullet destroy itself and we are going to have our zombie subtract one from its health, just like that. Now, what we can do is we can say if our player health compare it is less than or equal to zero, we can destroy our player. Now, one thing on destroying our player is when we do this, it's going to kind of mess up our view. So that might be something to, to kind of mess around with. Let's have it wait a second. And then we're gonna say reset the global variables and restart the layout. Now let's actually do it for our enemy. If our enemy is compare instance variable, instance health is less than or equal to zero, we're gonna destroy our zombie, but we're actually gonna have our zombie create a dead body, which sounds pretty uh, grim, but it's really not. And I think this adds to our game. So let's add in another sprite. Let's open, load up our zombie dead image. And let's just call this object zombie dead. Uh, we don't need to give it anything whatsoever. We're just gonna have the zombie uh, spawn. Actually, you know what? Uh, instead of having the zombie spawn it, let's have the system create it where the zombie died. We're gonna have the system create the zombie head on the, let's call this layer. Uh, we can put this on the layer enemies. Actually, no, I wanna put this on the, I actually want to put this on, let me actually look at our layers here real fast. Um, because enemies are above our player, I don't want that to get in the way. So let's put this on our player layer. Usually what I would do is have my own environment layer. And that's what I could kind of call these. Like I could try putting it on this layer. Uh, why don't we try and do it? Why don't we try to do that system? Create the object of our zombie dead on layer foreground tile map at object enemy dot X position object. Oh, not enemy object zombie. I'm so used to doing enemy object zombie dot personal X object zombie dot instance variable Y. Okay. So now that we have that, we are actually creating a little bit of a more permanent system that is gonna leave a mark on our layout, and that's actually pretty cool. We might wanna do something similar to that for the player, but uh, for lack of time's sake, we'll just have it reset and restart like normal. So now we actually have some collisions in our enemy AI. What happens if our bullets collide with the tile maps and how could we do that? There's a few things that we could do. We could put our bullets into families and we can have them collide. So for instance, we could add the family, we could put the enemy bullet there, we could put the player bullet there. And now what I can do is I can say family, if that is colliding with the tile map, then let's let's take care of that and let's destroy it. Um, that is one way of doing it. You can also do it like we're doing it. Uh, it depends on what version of Construct 2, have, Construct 2 you have. If you have the free version, then you can't use families. Uh, if you don't, then uh, or if you do have the personal version, you can, and I recommend using the family. Um, what we're going to do instead, though, is if this collides with the... Actually, you know what? I am going to show you the family way because I think it's a lot better, uh, and I think it's just going to actually help you understand what families do in case you are thinking about upgrading. So if the bullets 
collide with. In this case, we want to go not our background tile map, but our other tile map. So our house. And we're going to hit uh, Y on the keyboard. And then we're going to copy and paste this. Let's hit Y, copy and paste. Or at least this should Y on the condition. Paste that. There we go. So now we have an OR statement. And if we collide with our other tile map, the one that's not our background, uh, then all we have to do is have our bullets, not our individual bullets, our bullet family destroy anything in that family. So what it's doing, what our families are doing, they're also, not only are they inheriting behaviors if we had some family behaviors to them, but they're actually letting us individually pick out the object. So now all of the bullets, the enemy and the player, when they collide with the tile maps that have solid objects on them, they will destroy individually for each instance. So it's actually really, really powerful than doing this uh, by hand. Another thing that I want to point out here is our player bullet is probably going to shoot too far. So let's compare the distance traveled and let's find out if it's greater than 350 pixels. And if it is, let's have it destroy. That's another way that we can actually kind of deal with the bullet from going too far away. And I think instead of it destroying outside the layout, this is probably a better alternative if you're making a huge open world map. So we're having the player bullet destroy after 350. We could do the same exact thing for the enemy bullet if we wanted to, but then it's just gonna kind of destroy and it's gonna look a little funny. So let's go here, let's clone the player bullet and let's make sure that it's the same size. Let's make it 32 by 16. Let's double click on this. Actually, first let's give it a name of object player bullets destroy. Let's add, let's delete the bullet behavior. Let's delete the destroy outside layout behavior. Let's add the fade behavior. The fade behavior will destroy after it fades out. And let's double click on this. Let's zoom in. Let's duplicate this frame and let's grab our eraser tool. Let's bump up the size a little bit. Actually, it's too big. Let's go down to four and let's start to erase this. So just kind of to double click or right click and duplicate is what I was trying to say. And let's just start to erase. Let's make this a little bit smaller, duplicate, and just a little bit smaller so it looks like these pixels are starting to disperse. And something like that. And then let's add in a blank frame. So now what this is going to do, if we go back to our uh, zombie AI here, we're gonna have, right before our player bullet destroys, we're gonna have it spawn itself, the destroying frame. Let's have, it just, let's have it destroy on the player layer. And now, we've done a whole lot of stuff for collision. Let's see. So it's colliding with me, and it's actually subtracting my health and I actually died. So now let's let it restart here, and I keep dying. And that's the thing, because we have scroll to behaviors elsewhere, uh, we're going to continue that. Let me try to get out of here. All right, you know what? Putting the enemy right there, not the best idea. We can get rid of him and we'll bring him back shortly since he's going to continue to kill me. Let's go and grab our weapon. It's good to know that our, our uh, health is working, though. Let's go over here. Let's grab our weapon and let's shoot. And you can see that after it travels 350 pixels, it spawns its own bullet destroy animation, and it kind of has that cool disperse effect that we made. Uh, we can actually bump up the the frames on this and you can also see that it will collide with all the solid objects that we set it to collide with so there we go uh, let's quickly bump up that let's bump this up to like 15 so it's not playing the animation so slowly and i think that'll look a lot smoother that's going to play our bank layout let's hit play and let's go grab our gun let's go over here Grab our gun, and there you go. Now it kind of looks more like a weapon, which is pretty cool. So we have a lot of more environment things to add in now that we have our collisions pretty much working. The first one being, let's get our enemy spawner in. And once we get our enemy spawner in, we actually have to start adding in our objectives so we can finish all the other collision effects that I want to do. Actually, you know what? Before we do all of that, let's just fix our car stuff. I want to actually destroy, be able to destroy the cars. And after we do that, then we can actually get back to doing our objectives. So now that we have our collision with that, let's see what happens if our bullet, let's go to over here. Let's say our player bullet collides with our, on collision with our car or our traffic or any instance of our car 
traffic, whatever we want to call it. So when it collides with our car traffic, let's have our car subtract one from its health and let's destroy our bullet. Make sure that we don't have that going any further. Then we're going to make a blank sub event here just so we can kind of keep our car effect separate. Let's go to our car traffic and let's set the effect parameter of our brightness. Let's put this to 200. Let's have the system wait two seconds or not two seconds, 0 0.2 seconds. So it's a very quick uh, flash effect. Let's copy and paste this and put this back to normal. So at hundred. So when this is at 200 or greater, it's actually going to flash the object white and it's going to look really cool. And that way we are going to be able to detect that we have hit something. So let's hit play and let's see this work. So I need to walk over here and I need to get into my car and I need to come up here, get out of the car, hit space to get my gun. And now that there's a car, there we go. We can see that when I shoot the car, it actually will flash white. And that's just gonna be our general indicator for when these, when something hits something else. And this is something that you should probably put in all of your games uh, because it's really, really a, an easy effect to do. And it actually adds to the actual feel of how this game plays. So now we actually have some control over this. Let's actually do uh, more for this. Let's say if our car health, let's compare our car health to find out if it's less than or equal to zero. And if it is, then let's destroy the car. Now, as we were talking about before, if our car, we can actually, if our car is destroyed or if any object is destroyed, you can call the on destroyed function. And what we can do from there is we can have the car right before it destroys, we can have it spawn in an object. We actually have to make the object first. That would be helpful. Let's go to our bank layout. Let's double click and make a new sprite. Let's open up our black smoke and it's going to be really big. So let's put this to 64 by 64. Call this object smoke. Let's go to our game event here and let's have our car spawn our smoke. And when it spawns it, uh, we need to actually put it to the layer of, in this case, let's try putting it to our foreground layer and let's see how that deals. And we'll have to go back and mess around with our zombie as well when we actually spawn them in. Okay, so let's just hit play. And let's see how this looks. Let's get into our car. Let's go over here. Let's get my weapon out and let's start to destroy a car. Okay, so it didn't actually spawn the smoke on this layer. So let's put this on the traffic layer. Uh, and let's actually, hmm, let's put it on the player layer. And then that way we'll just make sure that we move the smoke to the bottom. Move to bottom, save this, let's hit play. Let's move around. Let's get to our gun, grab our weapon, and let's start to kill the cars. And there we go. There is our smoke effect. Now this is going to be the same thing that is going to happen with our actual um, zombie as well. Uh, maybe we would want to program in a way for if the car runs us over, we lose some health as well. Uh, but for right now, I think that this is going to work. Now I want to actually implement something for our uh, for our car when our car collides with the enemy car. So let's just call this group uh, enemy car collisions because they're kind of like enemies. They're kind of like NPCs. I mean, we can, we can attack them anyway, so we might as well. They're kind of just in our way. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that our car has health, which it does. And if our car loses health or if it's less than or equal to zero, then we're just going to have this destroy but we're also gonna make sure that our car can actually uh, destroy the enemy car or the car traffic, whatever we wanna do. So let's make this, if our car is overlapping our enemy car, or actually let's do it the other way around. Let's say if our enemy car, car traffic, is overlapping our player car, then let's have this, let's, let's both lose health. So let's subtract from our health from our car and we'll have it from our enemy car and that way uh, both of these will now actually 
do something when they collide with each other. So let's hit save there. Let's hit play. And let's get into our car. Let's go over here, get into our car, and let's find something to uh, attack. You can see our car health will actually go down. Actually went down to two. So that actually went down a little bit too much, uh, a little too quickly. So maybe what we want to do here is we want to say trigger it only once and that way every time a new car overlaps it will trigger that and let's see here we might actually want to increase the speed of our player i'm noticing that it's a little bit slower than i had anticipated it for it to be oh i don't know why i got our gun let's go into our car and i completely missed <laughs> let's wait for another car to come around let's see huh okay so we lost health, but it didn't really, didn't really feel like we lost any health, right? There was no real jerk motion to this, and, and that's what this is missing. So let's go and put that in. Let's double click. Let's make a new function. Let's call this screen shake function, which you might have seen in a bunch of my tutorials before. Do this a lot. Let's actually compare the parameter this time. Let's call this one player. And let's call this one car. And the reason why we have to do this is because we have two different camera objects. We actually have three different camera objects. We have one on the car, one on the player, and one on the mouse. And so they can all shake individually. Now, if we are actively in the car, uh, we don't want the player to shake or vice versa. If we are outside of the car, we don't want the car to shake. We want the player to shake. Now, this might not make that much of a difference, but I think it's better to separate these just so you can see how this is supposed to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the function call function. Uh, no, sorry. We're going to add to our player. We're going to shake function dot param uh, one times because we've already actually taken up param zero by comparing it. So this will be param two. Let's copy and paste this for the car and let's replace this with our object car. Okay, so now that we have our screen shake function, if this is overlapping, then what we want it to do is we want it to call the screen shake function for our car. So call the function, screen shake function, add the parameter, add three parameters. The first one is gonna be for car. The second one is gonna be for our magnitude of our uh, screen shake and the the last one will be for our duration. Now, we should probably add in screen shakes for a few different things. Let's copy and paste this over here. Let's change this for our player. When the bullet collides with uh, the car, I think we want to screen shake a little bit. When we actually fire the weapon, so down here, we want the player to screen shake. Let's put it at six. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things as well. Probably in the zombie event, when we collide with a zombie, uh, we might want a bigger screen shake or when the zombie dies i'm not sure i think maybe when the car is destroyed we'll have this play a bigger screen shake for a little bit longer just so it really gives us the impact that the car has been totaled without actually having car animations or cars on fire or particle effects or anything like that just adding in the simple elements that might make it feel a little bit better so now when i shoot the gun you can actually already see uh, that this is already going to feel more weighted down by adding in the screen shake. You can already feel that it it's actually like we're shooting something that uh, has what I just said, has weight to it. So let's shoot this, and when it explodes, you can see a little bit of a bigger screen shake. Let's grab into our car. The one thing that might be a little bit tricky to get used to, and you can see a bigger screen shake there, is um, the fact that uh, the controls are a little bit backwards. Okay, so we're not having ultimate success with running into cars this way. Uh, let's go back and let's take a look at that. So if this is overlapping, let's make sure that it calls this every single time. Let's make sure it's a bigger screen shake for 0 0.2 section, uh, seconds, and let's hit play again. Let's see. Okay, so we're driving along, nice and normal. And bam, we collide with the car. Bigger screen shake. Okay, that's what I was after. Bam, bigger screen shake. Perfect. So that kind of just illustrates to me that these cars are actually in my way. Um, and again, the controls here with our player are W, A, S, and D. 
and they're the same here but since they're just a little bit backwards you might want to mess around with them they are working absolutely fine for me we're in a little bit of a tight space so we're kind of bouncing around with this car but now we actually have a lot of more a lot more of a general feel to this game than we did before i guess the one thing that you might want to add in uh, is when the car runs over the player, but we have a few other things that we want to do specifically with our enemies and our objectives, so let's get to them. To begin with our enemies, let's double click and make a new sprite. Let's make this 64 by 64. We're going to leave it blank and let's call this our object enemy spawner. And let's make an instance variable for it and let's call this inst can spawn. Let's give it a Boolean value and hit OK. OK, so now what we want to do first is we want to put this on the enemies layer and let's lock the other ones. And we want to actually put this where our enemies are going to spawn. Now we're going to tie this into our objective. So I'm going to put uh, an enemy there and control click, put an enemy there. So now there should be two of these. Uh, let me grab this again. And I can actually show the collision polygons a little bit, so you can kind of see a little bit better. And if I uh, if I hide the inactive layers now, we can really see where they are. Uh, let me control click this over here, and let me put one over here. I like these positions because they're not in in the way of our cars as much. Uh, and this way, we can kind of say, okay, we start here, we go here, we go here, and then all of a sudden they're they're spawned here and here, and we have to do that. We have to do something about them. Okay, so now that we have our enemies done, we can turn off translucent layers, we can sh not show the collision polygons anymore. Uh, what we can do is we can actually go to our zombie AI and we will make a way for it to spawn. So let's double click, let's go to our enemy spawner and if that Boolean is true, if it can spawn, put this all the way to the top, if it can spawn, then we're gonna say trigger once for each enemy so this way we're only creating one enemy for per spawner so we're going to say system for each zombie trigger once and then all we want to do is have the enemy spawner spawn a zombie and we want it to spawn the zombie on the enemy's layer just like that okay cool so now we just need a way to actually turn this to true and this brings us into our objectives this is the whole that the whole thing that ties it together. How are we supposed to uh, go from point A to point B? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our game event here and let's group what we already have out. Okay, actually we have it pretty much everything grouped together. What we wanna do is we want to set the objectives to equal the numbers. So what we're gonna do is system, compare the variable of objective which is the number, not the actual task definition. We're gonna put this to one. We're gonna copy and paste this three more times. And for this example, we are gonna have four different objectives, three and four. So if objective equals one, which by default it does, then we're gonna set the value of task to equal get in the car. If it equals two, we're gonna set the value of task to equal get your gun. If it equals three, we're gonna say kill all zombies. And if it equals four, we are gonna say you win, uh, let's put that to capital, you win dot 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 for now. Just like that. So kind of just, I don't know, making it more fun. Okay, so now that we have this, this is our objective system. Let's group this together as our objective system. Now this is very basic and this can get more intuitive, but I think for right now, this will make a lot of sense if you've never made something like this before. If you wanna adapt this into a questing thing, anything else you, you wanna do, you can. So now if I hit play, since objective already equals one, we should already be able to see our first task. And the only reason we can't see it is because this text value is not uh, long enough. So let's just grab this just drag this across and let's hit play. So now you can see that objective number one is to get in the car. Okay, so what happens when we get in the car? It doesn't go to objective number two. So that's what we need to fix first. Let's exit out of this. Let's go to our car. And if we are driving, let's go to our game event. Uh, let's go to our, where it says driving. Uh, what we wanna do here 
is we want to actually add one to the objective, but we want to also compare what objective we're at. So let's say system, compare the variable. If the objective is equal to one, then what we want to do is we want to have the system trigger once in a sub event, system add to objective. So because we are driving, that is already our first objective since we set it to get in your car. So as soon as the driving variable uh, is, so as soon as that is in driving for the very first time, it'll trigger this once only because objective is equal to one. And then we'll be on to the second objective, which is go get the gun. So let's copy this and let's go to where we pick up our gun, player gun. Uh, and this is why it's actually pretty important that we have this. If we have the gun and the objective is equal to two, as it should be, then let's add one to the objective. So now we have to kill all the zombies. And now this is where we can actually call and set our zombie spawner boolean to true. So now that we're setting this to true, it'll go all the way over here. And if it can spawn, then it'll do all of this. Now we need a way to keep track of our total kills. And our total kills will actually add uh, one to the objectives for us. So very easily, what we're going to do is if our zombie dies, then we are going to add one to our total kills. So if the health is less than or equal to zero, system add to total kills one. Now we're only going to collect our total kills for our zombies and not for our uh, cars at the moment. I think this is uh, better this way. So if we kill a zombie, then we're going to add one to total kills. Let's go back to our game event here. And in our objective system, if the amount of total kills is equal to four, I guess we can make it greater than or equal to four. Might as well, since there's no more tasks. If it's greater than or equal to four, then we are going to add one more to objective, and that's going to equal this. You win for now. There are no more objectives to do. So that is completing our entire game. Let's try this out. So objective number one, get in the car, hit space. Objective number two, go get your gun. We're going to go all the way over here, get our gun. Three, kill all zombies. Okay, so the only thing that has not happened here successfully is the zombies did not spawn. Hmm. Okay, let's see why the zombies did not spawn. If we go look at objective number two, and we look to see where we are supposed to spawn them. Let's see, I think that, well, let's, oh, you know what we can do? Instead of it being there, we could try putting it up here. And then if that's true, it should then create them on the enemy's layer. I spell everything correctly? Yes, I did. Let's try that, and if that doesn't work, I will see if I can fix it again. So, again, get in the car, space, go over here, come up here, and as soon as I grab this gun, the enemies, the zombies should have spawned. And why they're not spawning, I don't know. Okay, I found the culprit. It is this for each does not need to be for the zombie. It needs to be for the enemy spawner. So for every single enemy spawner that we have, let's spawn one zombie. That makes more sense. The other thing that I was going to run into is I don't have the zombie in the bank layout over here. So let's just bring that in. Let's go to our game layout now. Let's hit play and let's see what happens. Objective number one is to get in the car. Let's hit space. Now let's go get my gun. Let's go over here. Let's grab my gun, and as soon as I grab my gun, the enemies spawn. So they should spawn in all the locations, and you can see there that when I kill them, uh, their carcasses have spawned, even though that kind of blends in. Uh, we have our screen shake working with our cars, which we can also destroy. Our total kills are going up, so now i got total kills too. My health is going down if the bullet hits me, so I have to be kind of careful here. There we go, and there's one more i got to go kill. And I think I am going to definitely increase my speed because I am a little bit too slow for this. Let me go kill this guy. And I win for now. So let me make sure I trigger that once so that doesn't happen. So uh, if objective equals four, oh, let's just say if it equals this, um, we will trigger this once. Add one to the objective. And let's hit play. So overall, we have, let me actually, let's bump up our speed. I can't stand how slow we are. Let's go to like 350, becoming an issue. 
All right, now we're much faster. Okay, go get our gun. Although we might even be faster on foot now. Once we get our gun, we shoot the enemies without losing too much health. Gotta kind of hide from this guy. Shoot this guy up. I only have three health left. Must get there. Oh, I'm so close. Awesome. I win for now. Okay. So just to recap all the things that we've put in place here, um, we've gone over how to actually use pathfinding, how to add in an objective system, how to use uh, all of these things to our advantage, and it was all fairly easy, which is really what I love about Construct 2 the most, is that even if it's really something that you think is hard, if using four each loops or using anything that you may have had trouble with from an actual editor, uh, where you're typing out code all the time is really impossible. This is all very, very possible with Construct 2. And with very little effort, you can have something amazing. So now this is just scratching the surface, right? We have all of these things kind of spawning. And yeah, I guess we could probably add in uh, a way for these to equal our total kills after we have already killed our four zombies. The only thing I didn't want to get in the way was uh, if we added one to a total kill there when we kill a car... Uh, then they would actually kind of ruin our objective here to kill the zombies. But, you know, this is a very basic task manager kind of system. This can be a thousand times more complex. We can do so many other things with it. Let's see what happens if our car health is at zero. I don't remember if we put that in or not. If our car health is at zero, then we should hopefully have the car destroyed, and then we're stuck on foot. Yeah, we are. So we're stuck on foot. The only other thing that we didn't add in was a way for uh, us to was a way for us to actually get run over by the car uh, and maybe a few other things. But overall, I hope that you've learned and I hope that you've taken away from this what you've taken away from all of these mini mini series uh, is that you can make any game that you want with Construct Two. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. It can handle any kind of game. Uh, and I hope that these techniques, I hope that this mini series has kind of helped you get your game to the next stage that you were looking towards or anything like that. If you have any questions, anything whatsoever, any problem, any issue, uh, feel free to private message me or leave a comment in the description below. And really, I do hope that you learned a lot. I look forward to reading your comments and answering your questions. I hope that you got so much out of this uh, mini series just from doing this quick uh, top-down shooter racing game, which was really fun to add. And I hope that you can expand upon this. I want to see your tasking systems. I want to see what you can come up with with the Pathfinder. And really, I'm just looking forward to seeing what everyone makes from this. Thank you so much for watching this. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander, and I'll see you next time.